So I think I've made it abundantly clear that the main purpose of my ferrocell research was to um, get my hands on, to develop, and or otherwise acquire um, a proper ferrocell simulator, computer simulation, um, so that I could do my own experiments. Now there are some experiments that, um, that I would have liked to have done uh, that are difficult to do in the actual ferrocell case. And so, um, so there's one experiment that people have been asking me to do. And um, so I think using the simulator to do this will be much easier. So the experiment is this. Um, take a ferro cell, cut a hole in the middle, and pull the magnet through the ferro cell and um, take a series of images as I am doing this and um, stack them into a kind of a 3D volume. So this is um, what people have been asking me to do. At the very least, they wanted to know what would happen when, if you took a magnet and pulled it through the ferro cell. And so the first thing I want you to notice is that um, I took a couple of pictures here today. Um, and what I did was I took one picture with the magnet underneath the ferro cell, and that's this image right here. And I took a picture of um, the ferro cell with the magnet sitting on top of the ferro lens. And so that produces this picture. So what I want you to notice is that these two pictures are qualitatively very different. So when the magnet is under the ferro, the ferro lens, um, you get uh, this picture here, and when the magnet is on top of the ferro lens, you get this picture here. And so again, these two pictures are qualitatively different, and, um, and so uh, that is sort of the starting point. So basically, in my simulation, as I pull the magnet through the ferro lens, or it might be easier for you to think of it in terms of me um, pushing the ferro lens down the magnet. Okay, so uh, let me move this up a little bit. If I push the ferro lens through the magnet in my simulation, at the end of the simulation, the magnet is going to be on top. Okay, so um, and at the front of the um, of the simulation, the first frame of the simulation, you are going to have the magnet underneath the ferrocell, and the last frame, you are going to have the uh, magnet is going to be above the the ferro lens. Okay, and so um, just for starters, I want to show you. Um, so the uh, I did the two simulations of the um, magnet below the ferro lens, and this is what you get here, which is qualitatively very similar to what the ferro lens is actually doing. And then when I do the simulation with the magnet uh, on top of the ferro lens, then I get this uh, picture here, which is qualitatively very similar to the um, to the actual ferro lens, and so you can see that the simulation uh, appears to be working for these two cases. And so the next thing would be to um, to do a series of images where I take the ferro lens and take a snapshot, calculate what the ferro lens is going to look like as I move the lens through. Um, the magnet as if as if there is a hole in the middle of the ferro lens. So hopefully you can see that um, what I'm doing here, that is what the simulation is going to do. So here I have a cube view um, where all of the, where I took the ferro lens. So you can uh, think of this front face here of the cube as the as the ferro lens, and as I move um, through, as I push 
this, uh, this face in. What I'm doing is I'm pushing the ferro lens through the magnet and showing you what the ferro lens would look like in each position. So I'm just going to slowly cut through here. So now I am pushing the ferro lens through the magnet. Let me uh, show you again what I'm doing. I am pushing the ferro lens through the magnet. So it's going to start with this kind of image and it's going to end with this kind of image. Okay. So as I slice through, you see uh, it eventually makes just this light pattern here. And as I slice in a little more, um, the light disappears. Now this would be exactly at the block wall. Okay, this would be the dielectric inertial plane, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is right here. And now I'm going to continue to push the ferro lens through the magnet and you will eventually see that the light comes back and on the back side of this cube you see the other pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to pull the lens back through the magnet. So basically I'm going to be doing this. Okay, now the ferro lens is um, below the magnet and I'm going to pull the ferro lens up until it is in uh, this configuration again. Okay, so I'm going to pull the ferro lens back through the magnet. Okay. Through the block wall, there's a block wall right there. There's no light and we're going to come back out and we're going to end up with the original image, which is the magnet under the uh, ferro lens. So here the, um, the magnet is, uh, the ferro lens is sitting on top of the magnet in this simulation. So this is the cool cube. I'm going to call it the ferro cube for lack of a better name. It is the, it is a visualization tool that um, we use. I've shown you this before. We use it in uh, looking at 3D ultrasound and MRI images. And so uh, what I'm going to show you now is uh, slicing through temporally. So now I'm slicing through uh, from the side. Okay, this is what it looks like from the side. So remember, the, this face here, wherever this face is, that's where the ferro lens is. And so you can see um, you know what the pattern looks like at that level at that at that intersection of the magnet of course the magnets in the middle right here and as I slice in towards the back slice in towards the back to see the other pattern now I want you to keep in mind that we are always looking at the magnet from the same perspective so this is the if this is the North Pole, when I slice to the back, that is the South Pole. If this is the South Pole, when I slice to the back, that is the, the North Pole. So the question we're trying to answer here is why does uh, this look different than this? So why does the North Pole look different than the South Pole? Or alternatively, why does the South Pole look different than the North Pole? And uh, the simple answer is that um, the in this location, in this uh, position of the ferro lens, um, the nanoparticles self-organize, right, in the presence of a magnet, um, they self-organize into a pattern that is the inverse of this. So at this location, the nanoparticles are, are um, self-organized into the same pattern, only we're looking at it from the back side. Okay, so here we're looking at, let's say this is the North Pole, we're looking at it from the front, and here 
is a pole, but we're looking at it from the back. Now this will be easier to explain uh, with the 3D model. So here's the 3D model that I showed you in a previous video. Here's the 3D model. Let me just shift it a bit to the middle. Okay, so this is the 3D model of the iron filings, of the nanoparticles, of the um, ferrous material that is between the two pieces of glass. Okay, so here we can see that uh, this is a very thin layer. Now, when you look at it from this view, okay, it looks almost three-dimensional. And when you look at it from the backside, it also looks three-dimensional. Uh, but there is a difference, okay? There is a difference between looking at the, um, the particles from this view as opposed to looking at it from this view. And you can really see this when you're looking at the edge here. And so when you look at the, um, the ferrofluid from, from this view, you can see that uh, some of the particles are not reflecting light um, to the eye. And when I look at it from this view, you can see that the particles here are reflecting to the eye. So the particles on when viewing from this side um, are oriented differently than uh, viewing from the opposite side. And so, um, so when I flip this, I'm going to get a different pattern. If I put lights around the outside of this, uh, from this view, it would look more like uh, this. But if I flip this the other way and did my blender simulation, it would look more like um, this. So as we are moving the ferro lens through the magnet, okay, around the magnet, um, when we are in this position, when the ferro lens is, a, is above the magnet, it is uh, looking at the front face of a pole. Okay, it's looking at the front face of a pole. But as you move the ferro lens down, okay, when it's down here, now the ferro lens from your perspective, because remember, we're above the magnet. So we are always looking at the magnet from this direction. So um, when uh, the ferro lens is in this position, we are looking at the front of a pole. And when the ferro lens is in this position, we are looking at the back of a pole. Okay, so that's, uh, we are not turning the magnet around. We're always looking at the magnet from the same orientation. And so if, if this is, let's not say which pole it is. When the ferro lens is looking at this pole, it is looking at the front of the pole and therefore you get this picture. But when you move the ferro lens through the magnet, uh, now we're at the other side we're actually looking at the back side. So now the magnet is sitting on top of the ferro lens and we're looking at the back side of the pole. And that is what the back side of a pole looks like. This is what the front side of a pole looks like. And this is what the back side of a pole looks like through the ferro cell. So that is why we see a different picture when the ferro, ferro lens is on top of the magnet versus when the magnet is on top of the ferro lens. So being able to uh, take a stack of images, to generate a stack of images and place them into this cube view was really helpful in uh, helping me sort out this difference between the when the magnet is um, under the ferro cell as opposed to when the magnet is on top of the ferro cell. And it also gives me this really cool uh, temporal view, which is basically uh, I can see the images, um, I can see a view of the images as they were stacked, as they were stacked. So this is the stack directions. So I generated this image and then this image, then this image and stacked them together. But it allows me to, um, to view this temporally 
what am I what do I mean by temporal well it took um, time to generate this image and then I went to this image and this image and this image and this image and so this is uh, you know um, how the images got generated over time and uh, so you get this kind of cool view which uh, I'm pretty sure no one has ever seen before I'm pr I'm the first one to uh, visualize this as far as I know since I seem to be the only one that has a proper ferrocell simulator at my disposal so that I can do these wonderful experiments and so um, yeah I think this is really neat this is uh, this is a lot of fun playing around with not only the simulator, but the other tools that I have access to that I have at my disposal that I use for work. But uh, I find these tools also very useful for my independent research. And so I hope you get the gist of what I'm trying to um, try the what I'm trying to accomplish here. This is a really neat experiment that somebody wanted me to do. They wanted me to either uh, move a magnet through a ferrocell and show what it looks like or move a ferrocell through a magnet and show what it looks like and that is what I have done. So uh, yeah, I hope you all had a great weekend and um, well, I guess I'll be back. <laughs>